Hi there, and welcome to this video on calling Python functions from Excel. You're probably already familiar with calling uh, built-in functions in Excel. For example, if I want to add these three numbers here, I use the built-in function sum and simply call it like that. You may also be familiar with writing VBA functions. For example, here in the VBA editor, if I had a quick function VBA test, I can write some code in here. For example, just setting the result to be this string. And now I can call that same function from Excel in the same way that I called the built-in function, but now I'm calling this VBA code. What we'll see in this video is how to do the same thing, but rather than writing VBA code, we'll write Python code. To show you that very quickly, I've got a Python function here, which I wrote, which all it does is return this simple string. And in the same way that I called that VBA function, I can call the Python function here, it runs that Python code and returns the result. And that's what we'll look at in this video. To call Python from Excel, we'll need to install an Excel add-in called Pixel. If you go to the website, pyxl.com, you'll find all the documentation you need, as well as the, uh, the link to download the Excel add-in. To begin with, I'm going to install the Pixel Excel add-in. And to do that, I'm going to start a Python prompt. Here I'm using Miniconda, but you can use whatever Python environment you're familiar with. I need to activate my uh, Conda environment to begin with. I've got a Python 3.9 one here. And then I need to install the Pixel uh, Python package. So I do that using pip, so do pip install pixel. Once that's done, I've now got this pixel command line tool. So if I do pixel help, I can see there's a, a few different commands here, and I'm going to use this install command. So I do pixel install. And if you've already downloaded the, uh, the pixel download from the website, what you can do here is just drag that over. Uh, so I'm doing pixel install and then the file name of the zip file that was downloaded. If you haven't downloaded this already, then just do pixel install without anything, and then it will it'll walk you through uh, downloading it. So I just hit return now. Uh, I'm going to select the default path. You could choose a different path here if you wanted. And then it's told me it's installed it in here. So if I go to that folder now, you'll see that I've got uh, some readme files and things like that. Uh, the Excel add-in itself, a config file, and this examples workbook. So to begin with, I'm just going to look at this examples workbook in Excel. Uh, and if this is your first time using Pixel, then you know, then I'd recommend having a look at this workbook. Uh, we're in this video going to be looking at, at user-defined functions, and there's a sheet here that shows you a whole load of, of different examples of using these user-defined functions. So now we've got Pixel installed and working, we're ready to start writing some Python code. Now I'm using uh, PyCharm, but you know any, any text editor or Python IDE is fine here. I've got a PyCharm set up here just to open the same folder that I had here. But you know, again, you can, you can put your project wherever you want. I'm just using this so we can have a look at some of these files more easily. The config file, uh, here, this pyxl.cfg file is how we configure the, the pixel add and how we tell it what, what Python code to load. Uh, there's a few few things to point out here. First is Python path. Python path is a, a list of folders that Python will use when it's importing modules. And then here in the pixel section, we've also got this modules list. Now, this is a list of the modules that pixel will import when it starts up. For our code, what I'm going to do is create a new folder Oh, I just call it source, and in here I'll add a new file, call it pythonfunctions.py. So this is where we're going to write some code in a second. Uh, before I write any code, I just want to add that to the config before I forget. So in here, the Python path, I'm just going to update this to say, uh, you know, I've got some Python code in this source folder. This here, I'm using a relative path, so relative to where this file is. So it's including this folder. But this could be an absolute path. So if you had you know, your source in, I don't know, C, source code, whatever, you would just add that in here. And then the Python mod module that I've added, Python functions, I'm just going to add that to this list of modules as well so that Pixel knows to import it. So Python functions. Cool. Now, we'll start off just with that very simple function that I showed you right at the beginning. So I'll write a function here called Python func. It doesn't take any arguments. And we'll return hello from Python. So I could test this out now. I could do uh, you know this thing. 
I could just say print Python func and then run that in the, in the same way I would usually. And then here, so we tested this code's working. And now all I need to do to, uh, to make this work in Excel is import the pixel module. So uh, I'm actually gonna say from, oops, from pixel import Excel func. Now this Excel func thing here is a decorator. And we apply the decorator to the function like this using this notation. So the at symbol, then at Excel func. And what this decorator will do is tell Pixel that we want to be able to call this Python function from Excel. So if I save that, now going back into Excel, uh, I can reload Pixel. So you'll have this example tab. You can go and you can edit everything about this tab, including the name, but this is how it appears when you first install it. But it has this reload button here. And if I do reload that, then I've now reloaded uh, all of that Python code. And I'm just going to create a blank workbook for this next bit. And here we should be able to see that now this Python func has appeared here. And if we call it, we get this string returned. And so I can go and change this, blah, 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 blah. Save that again. Reload this again. And then here, you know, I've updated the Python code and it's updated in, in Excel pretty easily. Now, a Python function without any arguments is of, of limited use, uh, but with Pixel, we can also have functions that take arguments. So for example, just as a normal Python function, let's say, pass in three arguments, A, B, C, uh, and we could do, I don't know, we'll just return, I'll just return some of these for now, so nothing, nothing too complicated. Uh, but again, now if I reload this, what we'll see is that my uh, Python function now takes three arguments, and if I say, I don't know, five, 10, 100, it will then, whoops, if I did, I've got a minus here. But you know, now I'm calling that Python code and it's, uh, and it's adding those numbers. We'll also see in the function browser here, if I go in here, uh, it actually knows the names of these things from the, from the Python definition. So it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty intuitive for an Excel user to then be able to call these Python functions. Even if they didn't know that this was written in Python, they would, they would still be able to use it. Uh, actually, what I'm showing you, the, the arguments here, I'll just show you one other thing, which is that if I had a, a doc string here, this, uh, and also I could do parameter A, this sort of thing, you know, so it's always good practice to add uh, documentation to your functions. But here, what's nice is that when I look at this in, in Excel, this documentation comes through here. And so I've got the main doc string here, but then also for each parameter, I've got the parameter documentation. So this means that if you're giving this function to someone else to use, or you know, even if, if you want to use it, but it's uh, in a little while after you've written the code or you've forgotten exactly what it does, then you have all the documentation here. So it's, it's a nice habit to get into. Going back to the arguments of this function, here we're just passing in three numbers which are being passed to our Python function and being summed here. Uh, but let's just see what those actually are. If instead of returning just the sum, I'm going to return an array of the types of each argument. So if I reload this, call this again, now I'm getting this array returned back but showing that each argument is actually uh, a float type. This is also showing that, you know, we can return arrays from these functions as well, and we'll, we'll come onto that in a bit. Uh, but for now, what if I wanted these types, rather than being floats, to be passed as, as integers, for example? Let me just pull out the arguments, rather than having them in here, just to make it a bit easier to see what's going on. Or we can also see here that, like, if I change it to a string or to a bool, these uh, these get passed through as these Python types here. But let's leave it as, as floats for now. Back in the Python code, this Excel func decorator uh, takes an optional signature string. So the signature string is going to tell Pixel how each of these inputs should be uh, should be interpreted. What we'll do is change it to say that A, B, and C are all 
integers. So just by adding this here, that's going to tell Pixel what these inputs are supposed to be. Now if I reload this, call this again, now they've all turned into integers. And in fact, if I change this now to something that isn't an integer, then we get this value error telling us that the you know the functions expect is something which is of a different type to what we've been passed in. Now we've seen how we can set the, the input types, uh, I want to move on to something a bit more interesting, which is uh, using uh, pandas types in Excel. Uh, so as we've got here, we've got a function which takes three integers. I'm just going to change this to take one integer, uh, and we'll call it n. And what I want to do is create a pandas data frame with, with n rows. So I'm going to put pandas, uh, get rid of this doc string for now. And then, so I'll create a data frame. And just give it one column to begin with. And then return it. So again, we can just test this here. So I'll just print, say, create a data frame of 10 rows. So I'm calling my Python func here with 10, which is going to create this data frame uh, with a single column with 10 rows. If I run that, yeah, as expected, we get this data frame out. But what's interesting is if I call this from Excel now, and let's get rid of this and create a data frame with 10 rows. If I call my Python func here, what this returns is this data frame string. So it's saying like data frame at zero one, and each time I recalculate it, that, that changes. If I change this, then it gets recalculated. Uh, but what this is returning is maybe a bit unexpected. So it's just returning uh, this string, which represents the underlying Python data frame. Uh, we'll come on to exactly what this is in a second, but just for now, I want to show how we can change the return type as well. So after the argument type here, we use a colon, and then at the return type. So here we're going to say the return type is a data frame. What that'll do is this will use one of Pixel's built-in converters to convert the pandas data frame into a type that Excel understands. If I run this now, now I'm getting my data frame here. I just had a couple more columns just so this. Just so we can see a bit better what's going on. So now I've got a data frame with three three columns. If I return this here. And there's also some options we can pass the data frame. So for example, we can say uh, here data frame with an index, and then when we Return that. We now get the index passed uh, as part of the, the result being returned to, to Excel. We can pass data frames in as arguments to functions as well. So uh, if I create a new function here, uh, let's just call it df head, and it's going to take a data frame and an integer and return just the few top few rows here as another data frame using this built in uh, head method on the data frame. Again, I use the Excel func decorator. This time we say we're going to take a data frame with an index uh, and an integer, and it's going to return a data frame also with an index. Reloading here again. Now I've got this function df head. I'll pass in these, uh, and I'll say, give me the top. Uh, I'll write something in there in a second. I'll do this. So here, say, give me the top five rows, and I've got the top five rows here. Let me just move this across a bit. So what's interesting now is that I've got all of this data in Excel, uh, and I'm getting the top five things here, so this could be any, you know, any transformation. If I change this to 100, then I still got the top, I still got the top five here. Uh, but what if I wanted to change this to like a million, or what if I wanted to have a million columns? then we'd start to hit the limits of what we can do with Excel, just because it would start to become very, very slow. Uh, and also we would just have way too much data in our, in our sheet to be able to handle. So what we can do instead is what I showed you before, where it was showing that, that handle. If we go back to that, just change the type here to object. This is actually the default type. So if I just leave that alone there, uh, or if I return object here, we'll see it's just the same thing. 
Now when I call this, rather than getting this whole thing expanded like this, I get this data frame handle passed back. So this handle, like I said before, but didn't really go into in too much detail, actually represents the full data frame. Uh, and what we can do with that is pass it into other Python functions. And then as it gets passed in, then that Python function will get the full data frame returned. So here I'm passing in this data frame, calling df head, and then that's just expanding these top five rows. So even here, if I said df a million, this is now creating me uh, a pandas data frame with a million rows. And here again, I'm just getting the top five. We could add another function similar to this to use uh, the, the describe method on the data frame. So this is just gonna take a data frame without a second argument and return the data frame. Passing in df, calling df describe here. Reload this. Now if I call this df describe uh, function with this data frame here, what we should get back is, yeah, this described data frame here that shows that I really am uh, working with a data frame with a million rows and, you know, all this other stuff here. So using this object handle, we can pack in a lot more data into a single cell in Excel. And it's not just for passing data frames around. You know, I could be creating uh, like a, a database connection or any other complex Python object, which we wouldn't naturally want to expand into Excel. And we can pass, pass Python objects around between functions in Excel. Now, there's a lot more to pixel functions than we've had time to go into in this video. Uh, what I would suggest is to go to the Pixel website, and then if you go into the documentation, there's a section in the user guide here called Worksheet Functions. And this covers uh, some of the stuff that we touched on, like the argument and return types, and then all the standard types and the, the pandas types that we had a look at. Uh, and then there's more detail about things like array functions, as well as asynchronous functions, different ways of handling errors, more details on the documentation and things like this. So this is really uh, a good resource for, for learning more. And if you have any questions at all, or if there's anything you're not, not sure how to do, then please just contact us and, and we'll be happy to help.